Welcome to Celebrity Interviews with Paul. I have with me today Wendy Durst. Wendy, for over 22 decades, 20 years now, has been a public school teacher teaching third grade until this year. Because there's a pandemic, she thought, not enough, let's go to fifth grade. And, uh, and Wendy lives in Colorado, and we know that because she is incessantly posting pictures of herself on top of mountains or riding bikes or all kinds of crazy things like that. Wendy Durst, welcome to Celebrity Interviews. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Well, uh, Wendy, how is life in the pandemic treating you? Ah, overall, pretty good. I, um, I'm single. I do not have any kids of my own. And I have to say, I'm pretty darn happy about that right now. <laughs> March, April, and May, I have a lot of friends who are trying to learn how to do their job and be parents at home. And uh, as an elementary school teacher myself, I'm very aware of what parents these days are going through. But I, and it hasn't changed a lot for me in terms of like living alone, but it mm -hmm. does change what I do for a job and my social life. Thankfully, right. I, as you alluded to, pretty athletic and a lot of what I've been able to do outdoors is still able to happen. Just can't yeah. work like we used to. Um, but heading into winter, it could be, it could be different. It'll be different. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, you have to get a trainer for that bike and ride Sufferfest all winter with me. It'll be awesome. Indoors when I have this outdoors. <laughs> yeah. Well, when the snow is 12 inches deep and all that stuff. Yes. So. That's well, what we um, cross country skis. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> what did, so when did you find out what's your school year going to look like? What are the protocols that are in place for, for you for teaching those fifth graders? Um, this was a, an interesting summer. It changed three times. Um, nice. We were kind of on edge for the first time in 21 years of teaching. We had voluntary staff meetings over the course of the summer. Um, voluntary because our contract doesn't go through the summer, but of course, right. every time one popped up, we were all ears. And sure, sure. it was to talk about what the, what the new process was gonna be. And the first time it was gonna be 100% students are coming back, uh, teachers, everybody, adults in the building had to wear masks, students were optional. Okay. And a lot of the adults were very nervous and very uncomfortable about that with that. Um, so within two days, it had changed to, okay, we're going back 100%. And 100% of people in the building, with the exception of preschool and maybe kindergarten, all students mm -hmm. were be wearing masks. Okay. And then like a month later, we got word, the, the teacher union put out a survey, and I think some parents sent uh, communication to the superintendent. And it changed about within a month to being hybrid, 50% on day, you know, Tuesday and Thursday and 50% on Wednesday and Friday and anyway, uh, wearing masks. And then literally a week before school start, it came down to 100% virtual. Yep. <laughs> it just keeps blowing up, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it was, it was an interesting summer. I was hoping for 100% virtual because I, I get it that under the whole summer, we were working under the premise that we didn't mm -hmm. think that students could get or carry it. But there are right. a lot of adults that work in a school building. So mm -hmm. it was the adults that we were, that I was worried about. Sure, so. sure. Well, I, you know, in our school district in 20, they announced that the first five weeks are going to be virtual. And then just today, the principal sent out a schedule for the block, for the AB schedule that they've got set up. And he sent out calendars all the way through Christmas. Wow. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I think we well, should note that. We are virtual through the end of September. And then our district's going okay. to be so. Yeah, I, I think five weeks is a little short because I think it only means you're going to make people mad twice instead of once. Yeah, in about I agree. four weeks, in about four weeks, they're going to be spitting mad again. But you know, right. what are you going to do? No, I agree. <laughs> How yeah. have you prepared differently to get? I mean, you didn't go in and decorate your classroom, I'm guessing, did you? Or do you have to be in school? Uh, well, the districts are choosing differently. Boulder Valley, which is right next to me, teachers have a choice of whether they teach from home or teach from the classroom. Our superintendent, St. Rain Valley, um, said that he wants all teachers in the classroom. And I think the reason is because he feels like it looks more professional. And yeah. I agree, and, and we, I agree 100%. Um, there are, I have heard some murmurings that teachers are always striving to be seen as white collar workers. And if other white collar employees are able to work from home, why can't we do our job from home? But on the other hand, uh, when we did switch at the very last minute to virtual, I made the mistake of looking on Facebook at the Erie Facebook page, and there were quite a few negative comments about parents who were really angry that teachers had threatened to strike if we didn't go virtual, which I hadn't heard any of that. 
and that right. teachers were um, were uh, frontline workers. Uh, what do you call that? Sure, essential, right, so right. Employees, yeah. right. And if the grocery store employees were required to report in person, teachers should too. So I so understand. What, yeah, so what have you done differently to get ready for all this? Uh, over the summer, uh, we had just the fourth and fifth grade the teachers are now using an online platform to deliver our instruction called Schoology. And mm -hmm. uh, there was a 30 hour course that I took online over the summer to learn how to do that. But it was really hard to learn because we weren't able to actually do anything. It was more like watching videos and doing a sample uh, lesson, but nothing could right. apply to what we were actually doing. So right, right now, if it's, if the technology is really the struggle right now. The teachers right. and the so, students are learning it together at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's a little bit less of a mess than the spring. So. Oh, very much. So, this is so much better planned out than the spring. So much yeah. better. So what do you notice differences in the kids? You've been there. This is your first or your second week in school. Second week of school. This, second week with the students. Yep. Yeah. Um, they really, um, we, there's four, four times during the day that they have to log on to have a live session with us. Three okay. of them are with me and one is with a specialist teacher. And we've given them a couple of opportunities to um, share, you know, items on the Schoology page, kind of get to know you, sure. classroom warm stuff. And it, the couple of times I've had conversations with them or the things that they've posted online, everything indicates that they really miss school. And yeah. they miss their friends, they, they, they miss school. And it's almost heartwarming because I don't think I realized how much kids like school until they don't have it anymore. You know, <laughs> I don't, live for summer I don't, vacation. I don't <laughs> think kids realize how much they like school until they don't have it anymore. Right? <laughs> you know, we, do, we do, you know, I do confirmation class with seventh and eighth graders and we do highs and lows. Well, we pick, pick, pick peaks and praise where you, you know, high, low and where you see God. And the, and inevitably, the highs are going to be days they missed school, and the lows are going to be days they had tests. You know? <laughs> Except for Angustin, who is from who is from Hungary, and his low days were always the days that school was canceled, and his high days were always the days he had tests. But uh -huh. that was Angustin. There's always one. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, uh, it's interesting what they what they experience once you once you kind of take it away. Yeah, um, yeah, the true colors are showing. So yeah. So do you see opportunities or advantages in the midst of this, or is it, is it all just horrible? <sighs> um, I was terrified the night before students started. I was so nervous. <laughs> uh, and every day has gotten markedly better. I think I, for I think me, I, I, think, I, re I think I remember you saying, like, I've been doing this 20 years, and I feel like it's my first year teaching. First year teacher again. We all felt that way. Yeah. Every day yeah. has felt better, but it's still the technology is going to be my biggest growth this year. And one yeah. of the... Uh, community building activities we did with the student was to talk about what they were excited about and what they were afraid about this year. And most of the students, their fear was that we were not going to come back together in person. And mm. when I modeled it for them, I said my biggest excitement was that I was going to be forced to get better at technology. So there you go. You've got to frame it, frame it in a way. Right. I guess the scary thing in all of this too, though, is that, um, you know, we're in a, I'm in a school district where they, they said, well, we're going to issue every student K through 12 uh, an iPad with a keyboard. Mm -hmm. um, and, they, and then they prioritize that by kids that didn't have access to that and all that. Um, and, and if you don't have access to high-speed internet, tell us, we'll take care of it. That's not everybody's world. Um, no. And the, the scary thing is the, the kids that, are behind, that were behind before this are going to be further behind after this. And, and to add on to that, the kids who have resources, the families who have resources are doing things like learning pods where yeah. they are getting together and, and moving between parents' houses so that other parents are able to go to work still. Mm -hmm. Or in some cases, they're hiring tutors to yep. be the stand-in for the parents during this time. So yeah. we, we also, our district also did the iPad, one iPad per student. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a loan, obviously. In the spring, kind of on the fly, some families that needed them were given them. And then come fall right now, every student, it was a one-to-one -one ratio. I have right. one student in my class right now who, um, even though everybody got an iPad right before school started, he started last week, day one on a smartphone, day two on his dad's PC, day three on a Chromebook. And he's now, his parents are divorced. So this week he's at mom's house and he's on mom's PC. So mm -hmm. in five days of school, he's been on four different devices, none of which are the ones that the school district issued. 
And when right. I spoke to the father about where this iPad is, he said, oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. He said, I swear it's at his mother's house and his mother swears it's at my house and we just don't know where it is. And the district's not going to give him another one. So right. My, this kid has been struggling. Oh, and my, my kid, my kid, my, my, my youngest son has an iPad because he had it when he was younger from the school and, uh, and he thinks it's wonky and can't stand it. Um, <laughs> And who knows why? And then, uh, and we we had the resources because we're not, you know, because we're blessed and fortunate that way. And we were, we bought them a couple of used at M M MacBooks, um, right? Because we knew they're going to need a platform and they're going to be on Zoom just like this. So we need like a good way to communicate. But we were able to do that. And I know that there's plenty of kids in plenty of neighborhoods that aren't, you know. Oh, so, yeah. But. Yeah, but that and that's a that's a hard reality, and I think we're going to have to be even more attentive to that as we continue to pay attention to issues and justice, and right? Things like that that the pandemic keeps lifting up in all kinds of different ways. So. Right, and when school does resume in person, I think every educator needs to be aware, and that we will be aware of the discrepancies yeah. between sure. you know where what the students' home learning environment was. Right, right. Well, uh, in the midst of all this, uh, where do you find joy? It. It's at work. It has been being back with the students again. I okay. did that. I would. Uh, I was really worried about talking or or lecturing to a computer screen. That's not mm -hmm. why I got into education. I feel sure. like my strength as a teacher is my interactions with students and the joking around and the the interactions that we can have together. And right. none of that happens when I see a flat screen of 27 students. Um, but I am trying to find the joy. Like just today, we started doing 10 minute one on one interviews with the students. And um, because I taught some of these students in third grade, I currently have eight students that I've had before. And that has really been a joy for me to see friendly faces that I already have a bond with. And mm -hmm. now trying to figure out how to make that same bond with the other 19 students that I have. Um, sure. getting to know them but you know seeing their sense of humor and yeah it's different and it will never be what it it, it is in person and if it ever if, if there's no chance of it ever going back to that I wouldn't be an educator anymore but it's right. enough to sustain me through this time um to, I did also um a parent brought sent in a gift card on Friday to, to Starbucks and it was just simply Aww you know, twins in her, in my class. And it was just, we see you, you know how much work you put into this. We appreciate it. My kids are loving fifth grade. And I was like, really? They <laughs> oh, love yeah. school. <laughs> so it was, you know, hearing back from the parents and I, yep. I, I alluded to the parents being angry at the start. And I think what another piece of joy I'm finding in this is knowing that everybody in my classroom, all the parents have been so supportive. Um, yeah. kind words and nice emails and, you know, Hey, this isn't working out, but thank you for everything you're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I feel very sure. supported. It seems like everybody knows we're going through a rough time right now. Well, your class and your students and your parents are clearly blessed by having you as a teacher. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you for your time this evening. Have a wonderful day. Have fun summiting your next peak or riding in the mountains of Colorado. And, uh, <laughs> while I'm stuck here in the flatlands of Michigan. And, uh, and blessings to you. Thank you for being part of Celebrity Interviews, Wendy. Thank you, Paula. It was a lot of fun.